1212, I go by the name of DJ Wood, and you're now listening to the original Jeek Podcast. Let's go! Ready to make an entrance, so backwards cut. What up, Jeeks? I am your host, the one, the only, Rockin' Mr. Magic, and this is another episode of the original Jeek Podcast. Yo, everyone, thank you so much for enjoying sharing last episode. Greatly appreciate it, and I'm glad to be back dropping another episode here for you today. We're going to get right into this episode. We've got some cool topics here for you. Uh, review of a podcast. So I'm talking about another podcast and some quick hits and a little bit of a, a, of a final five list here to round things out at the end. So we're going to jump right into our quick hits. Quick hit number one. Lego is dropping a X mansion. Yes. X-Men Lego style. So there is an X-Men Lego mansion that's dropping for Lego insiders only online. It's going to be an exclusive drop November 1st. And then we look at my notes here. November 4th will be the day that it drops for everybody else. So November 1st for you Lego insiders, November 4th for everybody else. Now, this mansion is going to have like, I think it's like six minifigs, maybe eight. It's also going to have a, it's not so many. It's going to have a Sentinel that you build and it's going to have Professor X. It's going to have Magneto. It's going to have Wolverine, Cyclops, I believe Rogue. I believe, you know, Marvel Girl, aka Jean Grey. Um, I, and this is just based off the picture I saw. Editing, so I'm probably going to throw a picture up on the video here. But it's going to have a whole bunch of me fix. It's going to be super dope. And it's going to run you $329.99. $329.99 is what that Lego X Mansion is going to run you. But if you want to have your version, save your school for gifted youngsters on your shelf. Like, you know, like my drone behind me. To kind of want it, might have to come up out of that three twenty nine ninety nine. You know, what I'm saying I might have to do that. It's looking at it, uh, looking at the picture now. It's oh, it's tempting. Quick hit number two, going from Lego to gaming. Analog. If you're not familiar with analog three D, it is a Nintendo sixty four. Emulator. So analog is making a, it's a console. It's a, it's a, a Nintendo 64 console, but unlike getting a classic any, uh, for and getting like a, either hooking up to a CRT or hooking up to a current TV that may still have, you know, your RGB, I'm sorry, red, white, yellows, you know, connections, which most, you know, they, they don't have. Most people aren't connecting anything that old to their television. So the likelihood of doing that is it's not it's not high. So what people will do is they'll get adapters to adapt it to HDMI so they can try to play those classic games on their newer TVs. Well, Analog is going to be releasing the Analog 3D console, which will allow you to play, and this is their claim. They'll, they're going to tout it as the they're touting it as the Nintendo 64 clone console that will allow you to play any N64 cartridge in 4K via HDMI on your television. As a N64 fan, as a big GoldenEye fan, as a big Ocarina of Time fan, a Majora's Mask fan, a, I mean, I, I, I love 1080. 
that was, that was my jam. Like there's so many N64 games that I have that I would love to play, you know, w, WCW versus NWO Revenge, WWF No Mercy, WWF 2000. I'm sorry, yo, WrestleMania 2000. Even w, WCW versus NWO World Tour, which is not as great as the others, but still good. Like there's so many N64 games I would love to just pop in there and just, NBA Live 2000, which I have, which, you know, was when, when Michael Jordan returned to video games since he had been had a hiatus for almost a decade and that Mike wasn't in any basketball games. And you, you had to play as player 89 or player 67, you know, some random person in other NBA games and NBA Lives and in the 99 sports ones, which uh, I forget the name of it. Fast breaker, open quarter, you know, I forget. But all the other NBA games you couldn't play as Mike. NBA Live 2000 brought Mike back, and it was dope. I would, I would love to have that without having the the issues that you have with adapters for the N64. Uh, my only concern with the analog 3D is the price point. It's supposed to be uh, available Q1 2025. Pre-orders started on October 21st, but the price is going to be $249.99. And while, you know, if I make another enough money on the side, I may splurge for it. Maybe not if I'm getting the Lego, but I may splurge for it. But that's a pretty penny for N64 emulation essentially i mean it's not truly emulation because you're playing from the cartridge but it's kind of emulation in a way uh because it is going to be using well it's not going to be using one particular emulator and that was kind of sort of the news of course my uh open fb open fpga is not going to be supported which is a uh, a feature that analog has used before in their analog pocket that makes it easy to directly boot emulators and ROMs. So it's not going to support that. So essentially what I think analog is doing is they are not supporting that so that you can't just start booting other ROMs and other emulators through the console. They want the console to be strictly N64 and N64 alone. They don't want it to be like a NES mini or an SES mini where people hacked it started, you know, loading all different types of ROMs in it, and then you've got all the ROMs in the world you want to throw into it. Analog probably just wants to be able to make their own, you know, Dreamcast uh, version or whatever and start, you know, selling you more than just that console. So that's my thought, just an assumption, on why it's not going to support the open FPGA. But, again, that MSRP, 250 I don't know about that, but it is intriguing because I'm a big N64 guy. Next quick hit is staying with the world of gaming. IO Interactive, IOI, IO Interactive, their boss, uh, I can't even say this dude's name. I think it's Hakan, uh, it's not Abram, Hakana Bar, uh, Brock, Hakana Brock. And please, if I'm butchering the name, my apologies, Hakan. Hakan Brock. I'm hoping that's correct. Uh, he's the boss at IOI. He shared some details recently this month about a 007 project. Essentially, and, and if you don't know, IOI are the makers of Hitman, which, you know, has obviously spy and stealth, you know, themes that kind of came from Bond inspiration slightly. So, this is why, for me personally, it's pretty exciting that IOI is working on this. So they're pretty much working on a young James Bond game, but this would be an original game, an original story. So they're not taking something from a movie, and they're not taking something from a book. They're making their own unique, separate story that's based on a young version of Bond. I've got a quote here from Hawken that really jumped out to me is really awesome that I really hope this project comes to full fruition. It's going to be awesome. So a con said, but what's exciting about this project is that we actually got to do an original story. So it's not a gamification of a movie. It's completely 
beginning and becoming a story, hopefully for a big trilogy, out there in the future. And equally important and exciting, it's a new bond. It's a bond we built from ground up for gamers. It's extremely exciting with all the tradition and all the history. There is there together to work on. There is, yeah, all the history, tradition history that there is together to work on this together. That's poor grammar on his, but it's a quote. With the family of creating a young bond for gamers, a bond that gamers can call their own and grow with. So that really jumps out to me as a lot of potential of what some really cool things you can do. A young bond, a young commander bond, maybe pre MI6 in the military, you know, all, you know, maybe even kind of like a, a bully for bond where he you know, maybe starts as a, as a teen, you know, you know, I mean, there's so much you could do, you know, obviously we know bonds, parents were, uh, you know, not the greatest parents didn't have exactly a great relationship. He was kind of orphan. He was orphaned, you know, boarding school type, rough childhood, detached, you know, kind of, you know, maybe they start there and, you know, go into and be joining her, uh, her majesty's service into joining her majesty's service in MI6, you know, uh, first kill, you know, becoming a double O like there's just so much you can, you know, do like the, the, the options are really, really plentiful, really. So that's very exciting for me. I really dig this. Obviously there's no name for the project yet. It's pretty much just called, can, being considered called project 007. And I, I wish IOI and their team all the success. Cause I really would love to cop this and be playing it, you know, hopefully sometime 2026. What I might guess would be the project may turn around 2027, maybe, but keeping fingers crossed for a six. Last quick hit going back to going down to the world of sports here. This is congratulations. Congratulations to the WNBA and a successful 2024 season. Particular congratulations to the 2024 WNBA champions, first time champions of the franchise's history, New York Liberty. <clears throat> Even though the ref officiating was questionable, I like a lot of Liberty players. Sabrina, Stewie, and of course, now I'm drawing a blank. Um, she won the final MVP, too. Of course, it's going to come to me after I stop recording. But Liberty has uh, you know, a great team, and they were determined after getting upset last year by the Aces. And look, the Aces, the three-peat is hard. Anybody that has won championships, especially back-to-backs, can tell you three-peating is hard. I know Michael Jordan and the Bulls made three-peating look easy. Yeah, you know, Shaq and Kobe made three-peating look a little easy. There's a reason why most teams don't three-peat. There's a reason why three-peating is really special. It's tough. You know, Houston Comets, LA Lakers, Chicago Bulls, Probably the only team, the only teams I can think of that repeated within the past thirty plus years. You know, it's it's not it's not a common thing, y'all. So for the Aces to unfortunately fall short of that repeat, personally, I was going for them. I'm an Aces fan until my Detroit Shock become a thing again, and I was rooting for them. But the Liberty, Liberty played better. I wasn't rooting really for the Lynx because I love Nafisa Collier. I respect the Lynx, particularly their coach, who I will mention a little bit later um, throughout this uh, shout out here. But this quick hit, I and then I got hot sauce to the Liberty, though. They made it happen. They were determined. It was a goal from day one. It was a goal the minute they lost last year to the Aces. So congratulations to the New York Liberty. Um, also, congratulations to unanimous MVP Asia Wilson. Fully deserved. Congratulations to Defensive Player of the Year, Nafisa Collier. Completely deserved. And if it wasn't for Asia Ball and the way she balled this year, I think Nafisa should have been MVP. She was that good on both sides of the ball as well. Congratulations to Tiffany Hayes, Sixth Player of the Year. Fantastic season for her off the bench for the Aces. Congratulations to Rookie of the Year, Caitlin Clark. Everyone 
It's well documented on the season she had. Started slow, started rough, hit a great stride, especially coming out, especially after the Olympic break. Helped lead the Fever alongside Leah Boston and got the Fever to the sixth seed into the playoffs, ending a playoff drought. Very good season, great, and especially the improvement for Caitlin Clark. Congratulations to Derek Hamby, who won the Sportsmanship Sportsmanship Player of the Year. And lastly, congratulations to Coach of the Year and Executive of the Year, Coach Cheryl Reeve of the New York Liberty. Sorry, the New York Liberty. Think about the New York Liberty. Coach Cheryl Reeve of the Minnesota Lynx. Coach Reeve is a four-time WNBA champion coach, seven WNBA finals appearances. Coach Reeve has the longest tenure of, I think, any coach in WNBA history. Coach Reeve knows her stuff. She's an excellent basketball coach. And the Soul League fans have nothing to be ashamed of. That team will be back. That team will be back in Hungary next year. Uh, if I'm in the WNBA, I'd be on the lookout for the Lynx next year. For sure. But that was my last quick hit in this episode. So, again, congratulations to the team, the New York Liberty, and all the individual winners of the NBA's 2024 season. Speaking of winning and greatness, if you want to make a great podcast, you should do what I do, and that's Zencaster. Using Zencaster, it's, you don't know, wait, you don't know what Zencaster is? Dude, Zencaster is a, not just a, it is the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. I use it. I've been using it for years. I have put people on to Zencaster. Why? Because it's been a fantastic tool to make recording easier. I have used Zencaster not only for the original Jig podcast, not only for breaking ring rust, I have used Zencaster to record other shows that I've just been a part of or a guest. That is how widespread the use of Zencaster is. It's fantastic. And I'm telling you, it will benefit you greatly, especially because it's affordable. Now, you can use it for audio only, video only, or both. Not video only, the audio and video or audio only. You can do one or the other. It doesn't tie you down, doesn't restrict you. And if you do use a video, because some people don't, I'm like, I ain't a pretty cat. I do video just because honestly, it's, it helps. It helps put a face to the voice. People like it. My face ain't pretty. Sorry. If I, I would like to be prettier, I'm not, but it helps put a face to the voice. You can see the emotion in my eyes. You can see the passion. When I articulate, it helps you when you see me. And the power of video is boosted with Zencaster. It records video up to 4K, and it gives you that picture-perfect quality your video podcast deserves. And also, Zencaster will distribute your video podcast in 1080 to all available video co- video podcast players. Not everybody does that, y'all. Uh, some others do, but not everybody does that. Okay? Also, Zencaster has great post-production tools to help you in the production of your show. It takes a headache out of processing your audio. Right up to the loudness levels, reducing background noise, all that easily done with the click of a button. It, it, it really don't get much better than that, y'all. It really don't. Are you ready to start? You ready to start? Go to Zencaster.com forward slash pricing and use my code Jeek Nation, J E E K N A T I O N, Jeek Nation, and you'll get 30% off your first three months of Zencaster Professional. I want you to have the same easy experience is that I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. So what are you waiting for? Try Zencaster.
to tell them Cheek Nation sent you. Your boy Rock and Mr. Magic. Remember that code J E E K N A T I O N Cheek Nation. Tencaster.com forward slash pricing. And now back to the show. So our main event today is going to be review of a podcast that you can find on Spotify, Apple podcast, our preferred podcast player of choice, good pods, shout out to the friends of good pods. And this podcast is called Oak bridge. Oak bridge is a story. It's a, it's a, not a show like mine. It's not, Someone talking, it's not guests, it's not hosts. It is a story-based show. It's an audio drama that I thoroughly found myself enjoying. So I'm going to give you a short, non-spoiler review of Oak Bridge. And then I will give you a a little more in-depth of a review on Oak Bridge. I'm doing Oak Bridge for two reasons. One, the creators asked me to give it a review. And I was honored, so I'm doing it. Number two, even though I'm not a spooky season participant, a lot of you out there are. So, being that I was asked prior and not, and not for, not for spooky season, not for Halloween, I was asked eh, maybe a couple months ago to listen and review the show. And I I did listen. I just didn't have time to do the review to be 100% honest. But timing wise, this coincided perfectly. So for our listeners of the original Cheek podcast that like spooky stuff and to fulfill what I said I would do, we're going to talk about Oak Bridge. Now in the, in the link, in the comments, not the comments, in the description of the show, in the show notes will be a link for Oak Bridge so that you can listen and enjoy on your own. So we're going to start by giving ranking of Oak Bridge. You know, we go through one through five, one being the worst, five being the best. Rank logo rankings. I am going to give this show a, well, actually, you know, before I go into it, let me give you a little bit of understanding. Because all I said was Oak Bridge and that spooky season. Now, what does that say to you? So let me give you kind of a, a little bit of a, a synopsis, I suppose. Yeah, we'll give a synopsis. I'm going to tell you what Oak, Oak Bridge themselves, how they describe their show. Okay. So it is a. Oh, you want know me? I'm going to use what it says here from their show. Okay, so Oak Bridge is a sci-fi, th- sci-fi thriller, mystery, horror audio drama set in the early 90s that centers around mysterious occurrences that plague a small town in Ohio after the U.S. government erects a nuclear power facility. When two teenagers are found dead, Sheriff's Deputy Jack Harris launches an investigation that will uncover dark secrets, which will put everyone's lives in danger. With the help of his friends, a rookie cop, an ailing sheriff, a group of kids and teenagers, and even his ex-wife, Deputy Harris will discover the dark underworld of government conspiracies, small-town corruption, and in the process, face his demons past, present, and future. So that is a synopsis of Oak Bridge. So, now that I have the synopsis out, I'm going to give my rating. Again, one through five, Cheek Nation logos. My rating of Oak Bridge is a 3.5. 3.5 is my rating. Now, you know, support why I think this. This is still part of the non-spoiler uh, portion, portion here. Oak Bridge, in my humble opinion, has a lot of good things going for it. It's got a strong cast. It has great sound effects. It's got a layered and overlapping story that honestly left me with several questions at the end. I re-listened to Oak Bridge several times, probably 
four, maybe five. And also that's because I did listen to it a lot while working. So there were some times where I had to pause, talk to customers, things of that nature. So I did some replay re-listening because, you know, potentially missing details. And honestly, this is something that if you're enjoying it, you want to pay attention. You want to listen to the details. So there, there is mystery here. You don't want to miss details that, you know, move the story in particular ways. And I found myself asking a lot of questions because I wasn't sure if I heard things right. I wasn't positive that I made the accurate connections. So I think the story is, is, is good. Uh, not perfect, mind you, but I think it's good. I think it has some similarities to other properties that bring it down, and that's why it's at 3.5. But this is season one, and I really hope that the Oak Ridge writers, the editors, the voice actors, everybody involved in Oak Ridge are able to bring us a season two because I have questions, y'all. I, I really do. Like, and I, I don't say that to like, you know, gas up, you know, other independent podcasters out there. Like I really legitimately have questions on this story that I would like answered. And I, I'm really hoping that I get to hear them. So some details. Oak Bridge is created by Ashley Dean. It stars Voice actors Connor Howard, Monica Wolfkill, Jenny Helton, Nook Savard, Quinn Caffarada Jenkins, Rachel Anderson, J. Rome, it's just J. Rome, David Sword, Sarah Velarde, Caitlin Cole, Justin Clouser, Gina Moravic, Corey, Carrie Hampton, Angel Karbalak, Remy Savard, Michelle Calhoun, Brian Murphy, and Andrew Wade. And I, I should know because I listened to it multiple times, but it was produced by nine, 97 to Now Production uh, production Company. So those are a lot of the central people behind the creation of Oak Bridge. Okay. So that is my non-spoiler rating. You are now officially going to be entering the spoiler zone. If you don't want to be spoiled, and I'm not going to go too spoilery, to be perfectly honest, but if you don't want any type of spoilers whatsoever, this is the time to skip to the very last segment. There's chapters in the show notes, and or press pause, start listening to Oak Bridge, and then come back and get the rest of this review. But if you keep listening, be warned. Spoilers may abound. All right, here we go. I'm going to give you just simply some pros and cons in the spoiler section here. So I'm going to start with the pros and then get to the cons. Pro number one, Jack. Jack is the main character. Jack voiced by uh, Connor Howard, yes. Connor Howard voices Jack, Deputy Jack Harris. Jack is... He's well, like well voiced by Connor Howard. He's got many layers to his personality that are conveyed, honestly, very well by Connor Howard. And Jack is more than your run of the mill cop protagonist, which really was pleasantly surprising. And I really enjoyed a lot of Connor Howard's, you know, portrayal. Uh, there were a couple moments in the last couple episodes where. Some danger kind of escalated. I actually shouldn't say it was a danger escalating. Interacting with the younger generation, there were some reactions that sounded like way too cliche for, you know, for an adult in their forties talking to teenagers, um, kind of, you know, like, what are these dumb kids saying type of reactions that just kind of felt like, eh, you know, yeah, Jack, like, you're not accustomed to what these kids are talking about, but you're, you're really that out of touch. I really don't think you're that out of touch. You know, you don't have to play that dumb, like, especially because Shag is a detective. And not only is he a detective that is currently serving as a deputy, but he is the best detective. 
that Oak Ridge is, well, the county's uh, department has. So as a detective, you may not be hip to all the hot slang or hip to what, you know, kids and teenagers are all into, but you're not dumb. And it's just not many. This doesn't happen often, but there's a few reactions that was like, eh. You kind of give them that ad lover like, come on, fan. come on, son. Like, the, the, I, I had that reaction just a couple of times. But again, Connor Howard, very good job portraying a lot of different emotional ranges for Jack. We see Jack go through a whole lot throughout this 10 episode uh, run of season one here. I should mention that earlier is 10 episodes, but I forgot. Uh, 10 episodes of season one here. Some other layers and stuff I'll probably get into with some other points, but Connor Howard, kudos to you. Well done, sir. Pro number two. This is related, this is related to production. The sound effects are fantastic. Like, I, I cannot really express how impressive to me the sound effects were. I'm going to encourage anyone who is going to listen to Oak Ridge, I'm going to encourage you to not listen, well, to remember that you're listening to an audio drama if you listen in the car. So I'm going to tell, tell you, this. multiple times was I listening to this while driving for work. And multiple times, the police sirens went off on the show, and I thought the police sirens were going off for me. So, just be cognizant when you're listening to this. You may hear some sirens, and if you're on the road, you might be looking at your in your mirrors like, is that for me? No, it's not for you. It's the show. Okay? Just be aware. Because they got, and they, they sounded so real, and they were loud. The volume of the sound effects is prominent. So when those those police sirens hit, you're just, bro, what's happening here? So just be <laughs> just be cognizant of that. But the production, especially the sound effects portion of production, uh, was really well, really well done. You could hear things very clearly, which I think is so important for audio dramas like this to be able to hear those little audio clues that are not spoken word clues to kind of help you get a gist and help your imagination create uh, visually in your mind of what you're listening to. So 97 Productions, excellent, excellent job there. Number three, Pro, I really enjoyed a lot of the complexity of the story so far. So again, Jack, the backstory of Jack Alone, depth layers. Um, we are taking, we are seeing Jack in present. We see Jack in flashbacks to recent, you know, within the past year and tragedy that struck for Jack. We're even taking flashback to Vietnam for Jack because he's a Vietnam veteran. So we go through uh, a lot of pain, old trauma. Uh, recent trauma, and then his current situation being in Oak Bridge, which is his hometown, and dealing with the aftermath of moving from Chicago back home, what caused him to move back home from Chicago, seeing the people that he grew up with and lived with, facing also his ex-wife, which was part of the description. His ex-wife is in town, lives in town with her husband and her kids. She is the acting principal at the local high school. And there's obviously some interaction and conflict there with the ex. Also, the sheriff of the county is Jack's ex-father-in-law. So his boss is the dad of his ex-wife. So. There's a lot going on around Jack. That's to put it mildly. But I like the layers. I like the complexity around Jack 
I also like a lot of the complexity around the one of the villains. He has I, I, they've left enough breadcrumbs in the story that leads me to believe there is more than meets the eye when it comes to the backstory of our of our primary villain. I think there is some backstory to behind the mysterious portion. Mi ten, Mi ten is the name of a character, and I think there's more to Mi ten's backstory and how Mi ten was developed and came to be that hasn't been explored yet. So I'm really, really looking forward to hearing more about that. And I think there's going to be some past backstory, and I really think that there's going to be some interesting, um, you know, government conspiracy stuff that's that's going to be going on. The story definitely let us know that there is some conspiracy stuff going on, being the fact that the private company that runs the nuclear facility is being funded by the government. So, you know, what the government knows and doesn't know, you know what ties it has to today, as well as maybe ties it has to in the past, you know, remain to be seen, but definitely breadcrumbs have been left there. And again, last pro I want to mention again, uh, kind of mentioned earlier again with the sound effects, but the volume. I don't think it can be stated enough that the volume is so important in audio drama. You don't want it too loud, but some things you want loud enough to be distinct. And again, the sound effects, the detail, especially shown through them, excellent from water sounds to, you know, uh, vehicles, Voice inflections, you know, the volume is, is is fantastic, and and again, not overbearing, but at a point where you're hearing the important details, and you really don't find yourself having to go back and re-listen unless you happen to be distracted, like I was multiple times working while listening. Those are four cons. I mean, pros. I have a couple cons. So my cons to Oak Bridge are. The biggest one. And I want to preface this con by saying that I don't consider Oak Bridge to be a ripoff or a knockoff of, of anything. There are parts that definitely seem inspired and very similar to a very popular property that a lot of people, especially during this time of the year, watch, you know, ST, the stangs that are strange. There are there are some there there's some similarities here, and but there is enough variance, in my opinion, that Oak Bridge stands on its own. But I, mean, I think the depth that it has, and will continue to have, will continue to separate itself from the similarities of the things that happen to be strange. So there are some similarities. Okay, small town, Midwest cop protagonist, teenagers, death, government, all very, very reminiscent of them stranger things. Okay. I ain't going to add like it's not because at hundred percent, there are similarities there. That's probably the biggest knock of the show. And if you get hyper-focused on those similarities, then unfortunately you're going to miss out on what's a very enjoyable listening experience. So please don't get hung up on the, on the similarities between Oak Bridge and Stranger Things. Okay. Con number two, even though I really enjoy this voice cast, and I think they did a really good job, some voices of this cast sound similar. And some of those similarities can have you wondering which character is talking right now. Some of the ladies in the cast sound very familiar to each other. And there were points where I'm not sure. I think it may have been done purposely. You know, producers of the show, people of the show, if you hear this and I'm wrong, please tell me I'm wrong. But maybe I'm right. I don't know. I'm just making, I'm taking a, a shot in the dark here. But I think some of the voice similarities were done purposely to keep ye, me as a listener guessing on who was saying what and why, because there are points where 
there was one particular point where I heard a voice and an action happened. And I was like, did so-and-so just do this? No, maybe that was this one. Maybe that was this woman. But they kind of sound similar. And you don't hear the person's name. So I'm left wondering, who did this? Who did this action? So I think some of the voice similarities may be to keep me guessing and have me wondering who said what and who did what. And if that's the case, bravo, because you definitely had, especially at the end, last and episode 10 at the end, there was a unexpected moment there that it really had me going, what, who, 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 who was that? So pickups to, to y'all for that. If that was done purposely, and if it was done accidentally, still pick up to y'all because that had me guessing. Um, the last con I have, I don't have many because again, this was enjoyable. And the only thing that brings this rating down to the 3.5 is the list of familiarities of Stranger Things. It is, like I said, it's a small town in the Midwest, teens, cop protagonist. Mom's involved, you know, what I miss, you know, mur- you know, death, government, like that's seven things right there. Like there's, I mean, I'm sure there's more that I'm, I've been, I'm just drawing a blank on right now. I didn't make a full list of all the similarities, but I think that's, that's seven right there. And I'm pretty sure there's a couple others that, yeah. And there's a, there's definitely another one because they have, they mentioned D and D but they have their own tabletop game that they play that they reference called Valar. So Valar is their D&D that they connect their mystery to the way the Stranger Things kids connect D&D to their mystery. So that's, that's eight. And so that's another connection that, that they do that's, that's very similar. Teen love, you know, breakups to makeups. You know, I'll tell you something. Again, there's 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 a lot of things that are similar, but but again, when you're doing a period type piece like this, as far as set, you know, early '90s, there's going to be similarities because of what's what's there. So again, it's not a knock, and please, 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 do not pass up enjoying Oak Bridge because of the similarities. Recognize similarities, acknowledge them. But don't let them be a turn off because as the story continues to develop, I, it really stands on its own as a, its own individual story. Don't, at first, I can tell you it was a little bit of a, it was a, it was a little bit of a challenge for me at first. At first, I was like, oh, okay, that's so much like Stranger Things. That's so much like Stranger Things. But as I continued listening, I was like, yeah, okay, this is different. This is interesting. Okay, this is cool. This is different. This is interesting. And the story really started to take a shape that's truly its own. So please don't be deterred by that. The last thing is uh, tied to the voices, and that's ages. Some of the voice actors, not many, it's only a couple, but some of the voice actors who really don't sound like the age they're portraying. Like, (laughs) there's a character that is the. No, now I forget the character's name. He's 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 the Steve Harrington. He's the star jock. He dates the cheerleader who happens to be the daughter of the you know acting acting principal. You know the ex wife of our main character. I don't. Uh, Doug. His name is Doug. 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 Doug doesn't sound like a seventeen or eighteen year old kid. Uh, bounce forty. Like, and you listen, you'd be like, yeah, that, that doesn't sound like a 17 or 18 year old boy. It sounds like a grown man. Um, and so like when you hear Doug talking to his girlfriend, it's like, uh, it kind of takes me out a little bit. Not much, but like, it's like, okay, suspension of belief. But Doug sounds, Doug, Doug sounds old. Doug sounds older than Jack or like he and Jack should have been in nom together. Like Doug sounds old. I mean, he sounds old. And Doug's voice is honestly the biggest one for me that really just is like, you don't sound your age. 
some of the others, it's like, yeah, okay, it's a stretch. You, you sound either a little young or a little old, but they sound like they're within that range. Like the, the actress that plays the, the girlfriend, Doug's girlfriend, she sounds like she's a little older than 17, 18. She sounds like she's a young adult woman. But again, that's just, when I was 17, 18, I didn't talk like the average 17, 18 year old. My diction was different. My vocabulary was much different. I, I, you know, I, I spoke eloquently. Yours truly is quite cognizant of grammatical parameters. I spoke, I still do. I speak in commonly with higher vocabulary and a higher sense of diction because that's, that's, that's how I speak. That's how I prefer to speak. So I didn't sound like the average 17, 18 year old and my voice, you know, didn't sound like the average kid. So that's, but I still sounded young. You know what I'm saying? So that's not that bad of a stretch, but I ain't sound 40 neither. You know what I'm saying? So that is the <clears throat> part of me. So that is where I came to a situation. So that is, that's where I am with the, the just the voices. Part of me. So that's where I am. The voices, all in all, I think are really good. It's just that one particular voice is really just like, eh, eh, I really don't think so. But those are my three cons. Again, I rate Oak Bridge 3.5 out of 5 logos. I definitely recommend you give it a listen. 10 episodes. Each episode's like, oh, that's like half an hour. It's like a half hour each episode roughly really enjoyable i think you will have a good time listening to it you know for those who enjoy the you know the spooky season this should fit right up your alley and enjoy and give you something new to enjoy that you may have not had the pleasure to particularly if you're out working like me and you want to enjoy something up that alley uh it's something that you can enjoy without having to be distracted you know by playing something that you have to look at or are tempted to look at, something that you can listen to and you know, and just let your imagination go. So, thank you to Oakbridge, to the social media team at Oakbridge who reached out to me um, and asked me if I would give a listen and review the show. Uh, thank you so much for suggesting that because I had a great time listening to the show multiple times and I found myself you know, not listening just because I was going to do review, but just because I enjoyed the storytelling, the complexity of the characters, the performances. I really had a good time listening to Operation. And again, I genuinely am yearning, well, yearning may be a strong word, but I'm generally highly anticipating season two and hopefully beyond of Oak Bridge. Again, listeners, the link for Oak Bridge will be in the show notes, I will have a link to listen to it on Good Pods, the preferred podcasting platform for enjoying and sharing podcasts by the original Cheek Podcast by Cheek Nation. I will also have a link for Spotify, the Spotify users, popular, and also for Apple Podcasts. Any one of those three will take you to Oak Bridge. You can start listening. To close out this show, we're going to have a final five. It's going to be my list of five things that I, that are within the spooky realm that I enjoy. And that's not many because I'm not, I'm not a horror guy. I do enjoy a good thriller, but I'm not a horror guy. So for those who may be wanting to hear my, any recommendations I would have for this time of year that, that celebrate this time of year, I'm going to give you a list of things that I find enjoyable within the horror slash thriller space. This is not in a particular order as far as ranking. These are just five. Final five from me, Rocket Mr. Magic. Number one, Scream. Scream is excellent. I think is Wes Craven's best work. It's extremely well done. 
it's funny you know on the slasher tropes the teen slasher tropes it is well done well executed well acted i i there's not enough compliments i can give scream fantastic film and if you're a horror fan you you should know and have seen scream if you haven't i don't know what you even if you're not a horror fan if it's just a good movie it, it really is just a, it's a good movie you don't have to be a fan of the slashers and over to appreciate that scream is a good movie number two is the birds the birds is i mean it's a classic excellent storytelling it's Albert, it's, it's it's alfred hitchcock man it's Hitchcock. It, it, it's it's good. Yes, it's older. Yes, because it's older and how they had to film it, it looks dated. Do not let technology of the time derail you from enjoying a excellent, well done, well paced, well acted story, and well filmed. You know, for the time, it's filmed excellently for its time. The birds is something that, you know, I, I watch it probably every couple of years just to remind myself of the excellence, uh, that Hitchcock did within that film. The next one is not a movie or film or TV show. Um, but it is within the, the genre and that is resident evil. Resident Evil franchise is one of my favorites. Resident Evil 2 was my first entry into the game. It's still my favorite Resident Evil game. Resident Evil 3, Resident Evil 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, 5, played 6 yet. Um, I own 7. I haven't played 8 yet. But I'm a big fan of the Resident Evil franchise as a whole. And that's that even includes the movies that don't go and coincide with the game. But the movies are, are can't be fun. So I include them anyway. But Resident Evil, specifically this for this list, talking about the games, survival horror. And look, man, in the 90s, that legitimately had me shook. You know, sitting there watching my man Will play Resident Evil 2. In the dark, there's like five of us watching, door open slowly. And the first time that liquor came up and they had the animation, and then that liquor dropped from the ceiling, we was like, ah! Like, it, survival horror changed completely in gaming with Resident Evil, and, you know, it, it changed it for the better. Resident Evil, Capcom, Chef's kiss, you know, y'all, y'all did your thing. Like, there's there's no other words for it. So that's number three. Number four is going back to movies. I was going to do another game here, but number four goes back to the movies, and it's a uh, it's another film that isn't necessarily core. It's more thriller. Because I'm, again, I'm not a horror guy. I'm not a supernatural death. Deep. Look, I don't play with the devil like that. Okay, I just don't. So, you know, there's not a lot of, there's not going to be any supernatural or even and stuff. And there's not going to be even like super gory stuff. Like I don't dig Saw. I got uh, none of that. None of that's for me. But this is smart enough, intelligent, well done, well acted, amazing film. And that's Silence of the Lambs. You know, Anthony Hopkins was amazing. And I, told, I think he's only in the film for like 15 minutes. And Jodie Foster, who I adore was magnificent in this film. I was way too young to be watching this movie. I definitely probably wasn't, well, definitely wasn't allowed to watch this movie. But, you know, when you're other other people's houses and the other people have rules, their rules are different, and I end up watching Science of the Lamb. And I really I wasn't really scared. I was more mesmerized. And the film has only gotten better, in my opinion, with age. It's phenomenal. Silence of the Lambs. Before I give my number five, I'm going to give an honorable mention. I wanted to put two video games on this list, and I didn't, but the other video game was going to be Silent Hill. Okay. So, to round out this final five, the last entry is going to be in the movie Juice. Now, before you come at me, 
truth is a thriller. Don't necessarily have to call it horror, okay? But juice is a thriller, okay? Tupac as Bishop was scary in a mug. I, juice is a thriller. It's, I mean, if he had a knife, it'd be a slasher. All right? He shot still, almost killed him, killed another cat, killed Raheem. He need to kill Raheem. That was his boy. Sitting there hugging Raheem's mom at the funeral. Like, come on, man. Try to kill Q. Bishop got a gun. He's a bad man. Juice is scary. It's a thriller. I don't care what you say. Argue with me in the comments. Go ahead. Argue with me in the comments on Good Pods. Argue with me on Spotify. I don't care. Argue. Bring it. Juice is a thriller. Bar none. That's it. It's done. It's done. I'm a wrap. This episode's a wrap. I'm done. Yes, I said it. Episode is a wrap. That's the list. The birds. Silence of the lamb. Silence of the lambs. The birds. Scream. Resident Evil. Juice. That's the list. Argue with your mom about it. Rock and Mr. Magic. This has been the Original Cheek Podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode. Check us out. Apple Podcast, Spotify, CastBox, and of course, our preferred podcast listening platform, Good Pods. Download it on Apple, Android. Check out Good Pods. That's where we prefer you to listen and engage with us. So please do so. If you can't find us on your preferred app of choice, let us know. Email us at geeknation at gmail.com or message us on Facebook, Twitter, IG, wherever. And until next time, peace. I make an entrance so backwards. Uh, come on, cut for me. Oh, yeah. Whoa, slow down. Uh, uh, Whoa, speed up. This is DJ What, and you're listening to the original Jeek. Podcast.